Hello friends, Josh Knox here with another Excel and Dynamics 365 data video. In our past videos, we've looked at how you can use the Excel or the D365 add-in in Excel to, to connect with your D365 data and different things that we can do with that. Um, but there's also another way that we can connect with our D365 data and that's through OData or the, the Open Data Protocol. Uh, the page is here and I'll put the link down at the, the bottom of this post. Uh, but when I found out how this works, when I found out that you don't actually need the, the Excel data add-in or the, the D365 add-in in Excel in order to access your data, to me it was like that, that scene in the matrix, you know, when, when that little kid's sitting there going like, bend the spoon and Keanu Reeves is like, how do I bend the spoon? And the kid's like, there is no spoon. And then, then he goes, Ooh, ah. and then after that, you know, Morpheus goes like, hey, like you can dodge bullets or Keanu Reeves goes, well, I can dodge bullets. And Morpheus is like, actually just kidding. You don't need to dodge bullets. They can just pass through you or something because they're not real like the spoon's not real or whatever. We're getting off track. <clears throat> um, but what I, what I want to show you today, so oh, there's this open data protocol. What is the open data protocol? It's, well, it's like an API. What's an API? An API is ways that computers can talk to other computers or, or the data can be, the structured data can talk with other structured data because we're expecting it to be in a certain structure. And if any of you are CS degrees and are going to tell me I butchered that, I would love for you to tell me better how I can explain that better. But all, all you really need to know is that OData is a, a structure. It's a, and then using uh, Power Query, we can connect to, to the OData, to the structured data, and read the structured data in OData. Um, so the, the way that you can connect to this OData, or even the way that exists, is basically, you know, we have data entities inside of Dynamics. When we connect to Dynamics in, the, in Excel using the Excel Data Connector, we're finding our, our data entity and we're, we're connecting to it that way. So those data entities, there's sort of an attribute of them that can say, right, is this a public data entity? And if the data entity is public, then you can uh, find that data entity and you can access it just by going to right, the, the Dynamics, uh, your Dynamics URL, and then putting slash data at the end of it. So I have an example environment here. Uh, and if I write, so my trial environment, blah, blah, blah. And if I say slash data, do, 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 it will return to me all of the different data entities, so all the different O data entities that, that are exposed, uh, basically. So we can, we can look, let's find some of our favorites. Control F is sort of your friend here. Let's say customers V3, right? That's the latest version, right? You can see, so there is an O data entity with the name customers V3. Um, and let's say projects, right? A personal favorite of mine, project. Uh, well, there's project roles, project, project stages. Uh, parent projects, right? A lot of other project stuff. Now here is projects, projects. Lovely. Uh, so you might say, well, then how do we look at that, that data entity? How do we, we see what's in it? Well, you can actually see what's in it by saying slash data slash here's projects. Now let me point something out because if we say projects with a lowercase p, we get an error that says, hey, there's nothing. And that's no fun. And if we do projects with an uppercase P, we get, oh, cool, you're connected. And you get nothing. Now, why is that? So the, the issue here is that our, our all of our projects data exists in a given uh, legal entity. So we can either name the legal entity or we can use this, they call it a cross company query cross, where is it? Cross company behavior. So we can say, if we add question mark, cross company equals true, right? That will give us um, all of the, the 
company data uh, or the, the projects data across all of the companies. So watch, if we add this cross company equals two, show me all the projects. Now we get, whoa, no spoon. This looks just like the matrix, right? Lots and lots of data scrolling down your screen. Hard for you to read as a human because we humans don't really live in the matrix or do we? Um, but the, the structure here is, is sort of helpful, right? We can see this is our, this is our query, right? Give me the, the project stuff. And then each of these records is really a specific project ID record with all the fields that are listed there in the, the data entity. So here's right, one project ID, right? Here's project ID 03, here's project ID 04. And then all of the fields in your data entry are, are included here. All right, but so this is all of that project data, but it's not so legible. Um, well, Power Query to the rescue. Let me open a new Excel document. Let's bring in a new Excel document, all right? So in our last video, we looked at how you can use Power Query to, to, uh, to try and shape data that you're bringing in with the, the Excel add-in connector. Uh, in this video, I want to show you how you can connect directly to that, that O data um, and, and look at it. So we would say get data from, uh, from our other sources, and I want an O data feed. And that says, right, there's some URL that's going to give me an output of data that looks like this. So that would be this, this feed right here. Uh, right with projects cross company equals true. Uh, let's move in here. Let's paste that guy in here, right? So data projects cross company equals true. So give me all of the project entity data across all of the companies. Click OK. Let's see how long this takes to connect. That is the one thing about the, the O data feed and this approach is uh, it might take a little bit of time to um, to do its thing. Uh, that makes the O data feed good for connecting to header data, let's say, um, but maybe not as good for transactional data. Let's say you have millions of records that you're trying to to work through. Um, so that connected me right away. Um, and I'll, I'll show you there, there is a, an authentication that has to take place. I'm already authenticated in the sense that I'm, I'm signed into to Excel and I've, I've told it to use the OData credentials that uh, basically use my organization OData credentials. So that's how I get connected to the data. Um, but let's say we want, uh, we, could, we could load the data and that would load all the columns of data that are in the project entity, but maybe that's not what I want. Maybe we want to transform the data and just bring in some select number of columns. So you can see that brings all of this into an OData, into the Power Query query, just like we used before. Let's say I want data area ID, project ID, and uh, we'll go with how about project name? Let's let's pull in the project group as well. So where is the name? It should be alphabetical. Um, I'm sure there is a better way to to select these things, but we'll just keep doing it until we find it. You ever feel like you've gone too far? Um, now this is interesting because this has uh, table connections. It looks like to um, two other tables. So the whole the whole structure is sort of accessible here. If we wanted to do joins uh, that way, it looks like we are able to. Um, but all I really want show me some names. Status, customer, project stage. I'm sure this is real exciting for you right now. 
time measure. There's the project name. Let's take the project name. I'm holding control so that I'm selecting that as well as those first columns. Let's take project group and then we can right click and we can say remove uh, all the other columns. I just want those four columns. Trimming it, well, that's nice. Now we've got a project ID, right? USSI company, project name, and the project group. So we can load and close this to our um, to our table, right? We have query one because that's what we've named it. We could name it better. Right? We're getting that external data, and it's bringing that into our Excel table. All right, 28.9 megabytes, all right, 341 rows loaded. Um, so let's, let's watch. We should be able to make a change in our dynamic system and then see that change reflected here. So let's, let's look at that. Um, let me duplicate this. Let's go back into the user interface. Let's look at all projects. And then USSI. Bring this over here. All right, you can see, okay, how about all the all the projects? All right, there's project one. Here's project one. And what if we were to change the name? OData is cool. A very mature name. Hit save. So now that's saved. So that's saved in our Dynamics database. So that should mean that if we were to refresh our, our connection here, which will rerun the query, we should get the updated project name here in our report. Do, 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 do. Right, see our name has updated. Project data is cool. So that's how OData works within Dynamics. That's how you can find what OData entities you have exposed, right? By, by going to the, the data section. And then you can drill into them once you uh, choose some, some entity, right? You can, you can drill into it and you can take that, that OData connection URL and you can connect to it through through Excel, which gives you a more pleasant uh, experience to, to edit or to not to edit, but to um, format and interpret the data, structure the data the way that you'd like to, right? Using all the, the powerful things that you can do within Power Query, um, right? There's some other great features in here. Uh, maybe we'll do a, another video on that, but you can do some, some special queries in your URL string to, to sort of look at even, you know, refine your, your filter before it gets to Excel. But maybe we'll explore that in a, another video. So if you've watched this far, thank you. Um, give me a, a light or a spoon or something like that. And uh, yeah, look forward to putting out another video. I'll see you.